All right, now that we've got this board cleared up, let's talk about the most general polar rectangle, right? And it's a sector. Right? So it looks something like this. Right? So we have y, x, and then let's say it has angle theta 1 and angle theta 2, right? And then <clears throat> inner radius uh, R1, right? and then outer radius R2. Right? So we're looking at this region right here. Right? This is D. How do we describe D in polar coordinates? Oh, D is just the R thetas where R goes between R1 and R2 and theta goes between oops, theta 1 and theta 2. Okay. So that's the most general polar rectangle possible. Right? Just, it, it's not the full radius, it's not the full 2 pi. Right? So what do, we, what do we need to do with this? Well, if you think of a double integral over d of f of xy dA, right? and if you think back to where that dA came from, it's the area of a rectangle. right? So if we're going to start describing this then in polar coordinates, so r cosine theta, r sine theta, remember dA was dx dy or dy dx. What does that become when we go to polar? Well, let's figure that out. Right? We want to figure out the area then of one of these, right? because that's where dA comes from. So how do we get the area of that? Well, remember, the area of a sector uh, are not even, I think it is a sector, or let's say a wedge, because I don't remember if, what the proper terminology is. Right. So area of a wedge of a circle of radius r. Right. What is that? Well, this is, so actually let's just draw the region real quick. We're talking about something like this. Right. This is radius r, and I want to say the angle in here is delta theta. <clears throat> right? Then the area is one half uh, <clears throat> r squared delta theta. Right? So it kind of relates to pi r squared a little bit. Right? So what do we do with this? What's the point of this? Well, Let's write out then the area of D. Right? So let's get a new color here. Area of D. Well, it's going to be one half. Uh, but now we have to see, we can see this as sort of the difference of the areas of two of these wedges, the big one minus the small one. So we're going to have one half r2 squared delta theta, right? Where here delta theta is uh, theta two minus theta one, okay? Uh, minus one half. Oh, there's a square there. Minus one half r1 squared delta theta. But, okay, that, that's a little bit complicated. 
<clears throat> well, we're going to do a little trick here. Okay. So let's factor uh, this 1 half r2 squared minus 1 half uh, r1 squared. Actually, let's even bring that 1 half all the way out. So 1 half r2 minus r, r2 squared minus r1 squared delta theta, right? And now we can factor this as a difference of squares into 1 half uh, r2 plus r1, r2 minus r1 delta theta, right? Now let's look at what these are. Well, this one is kind of a midpoint r, so let's call that uh, r star. Okay. This is the change in the radius from here to here. Let's call that delta theta or delta r, and then we already have delta theta. Can you guess now what da is going to become? <coughs> so if you like, since this is one of the small rectangles that we're going to integrate over. You could call this dA, or delta A. So then, dA ends up being just r dr d theta, right? And that's what comes up here, r dr d theta, right? So that's the most important part of polar coordinates in double integrals, is this formula right here. DA is R dr d theta. So when you switch from Cartesian coordinates, from x, y coordinates to polar, you get dr d theta, but don't forget the R. Right? That's one of the most common mistakes that I've seen students make with this material, is forgetting the R. So always remember, there's an R in here. Okay.